After the Sunset was a movie, rather a Hollywood movie, starring Pierce Brosnan and Salma Hayek. Now we are questioning why there is still heat after the sunset. Surely it's a climate change, which is no more a myth, no more a prediction, rather it is more evident. This is Shubhrajit Ganguly and you are watching The Heritage Pod and today we have with us a renowned environmentalist, Dr. Vandana Shiva. Welcome ma'am. Hi. So, uh, a small question. I mean, uh, how difficult it is to communicate about environmental issues because we have taken this earth for granted. It's very true. We've no, not just taken the earth for granted. We've treated destroying the earth as our right and our privilege and our development project. Um, and that's partly because we've become ecologically illiterate. We are not understanding yeah. the processes that give us life, our food, our water, our breath, that stabilize the earth, the link between the biosphere and the atmosphere. So we are ecologically illiterate, we are spiritually illiterate now, we are very, very good at chasing the money god. And it, it has reached a stage of becoming a threat. I mean, it's already hurting the earth, but it's becoming a threat to the future of human survival. Yeah. I mean, uh, look at the kind of infrastructure development which is going on, especially in our country, especially in the hilly zones of the Himalayan terrains, like places like Sikkim, Shiliguri, construction of railways. And we know that Himalayan mountains are growing mountain. How dangerous it is, considering all the yeah. catastrophes which we, have, which we are experiencing in, in, the, in the northeast yeah. and the east. You know, Pakistan. as a child of the Himalayas, and as a volunteer in the first movement, that was cautioning the world about the fragility of the Himalaya, but also the gifts of the Himalaya. You know, kya hai jungle ke upkar, mitti pani aur biyar da chipko women said. I think the very word infrastructure development is part of that myopic view, because infrastructure has to be for something. Yes, absolutely. And an infrastructure made of cement and steel and blasting fragile Himalaya that are still growing is an infrastructure for greed how to make money without thinking of the fact that 40 uh, laborers will get stuck in a tunnel, without thinking of the villages whose homes are collapsing, the landslides that are coming up. Exactly. There is another infrastructure that we need to be preoccupied with. I call it the infrastructure of life. Absolutely. And that's what ecology provides. That's what the trees provide. That's what the soil provides. That's for what clean wetlands provide, that's what free-flowing rivers provide, that's what stable mountains provide. So, we, you know, the British were very good at it, taking a broad concept and narrowing it down. Absolutely. Invest used to mean make something beautiful, like universities have investor ceremonies when they dress up in gowns. Today, investors make money out of money. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So it's this reductionism to money, and Aristotle had a very powerful differentiation. He said, economy is the art of living. Money making is crematistics. Absolutely. We've, we've become experts in money making for a few people. The others are losing what they have, their land, their yeah. homes, their seas, their future. And so these are the basic foundations, Absolutely. which I call learning how to live in Earth democracy, learning once again we are part of the Earth family, and learning how taking care of ourselves will only happen when we take care of the Earth. Absolutely. In the name of development, we see uh, the process or how the way we are e executing or implementing the developmental issues are more superstructural. I mean, we are still copying the Western countries like the buildings in Mumbai. If you see the skyscrapers in Mumbai, they actually trying to copy the architecture of New York by making all those glass buildings. But the temperature mm. in New York versus Mumbai, the average temperature is absolutely different. And I was reading an article which says that the reflection of the sun, which reflects from the glass buildings of Mumbai, is actually doubling the effect of sunlight and it is increasing the UV ray and the temperature. So, The albedo effect yeah, yeah. from ill-adapted urban planning, urban planning yeah. is actually aggravating far more whatever anyway we are facing because we've destabilized the climate system and we've destabilized the climate system by destroying the biodiversity because biodiversity is the stabilizer. The earth after all reduced the temperature from 290 degrees 
to 13 degrees through yeah. photosynthesis Absolutely. over 4 billion years. The Earth took 98% atmosphere of carbon dioxide and turned it to 0.03%. That is the power of cooling by the biosphere, but it's also the system that provides us food. It's also the system that provides livelihood. That's the system that creates the infrastructure of life. And this is what Indian civilization was about. Read Tagore, read J.C. Bose, read Gandhi. This is what the freedom movement was about. And, uh, and it, it is sad that we actually have a vocabulary that's rich enough to say, yes, Sanskriti hai, yeah. this builds. Ye vikriti hai, this destroys. And we are calling vikriti development. Hmm. We've lost our own language. Absolutely. So you are associated with uh, the Chipko movement, as you said. Yeah. So uh, right now we are having a similar kind of a condition in the border area of India and Bangladesh. There is a place called Joshua Road. So we have trees which are more than 200 years old. The road is very narrow. It is creating traffic congestion. In order to uh, correct that, the government has decided to cut down almost 240 trees which are more than 250 years old. Mm. So it is not only providing oxygen and rainfall for that particular area of Bonga and others, it is also habitat of many species. So uh, Supreme Court has also rejected this petition. So there is a slogan like Chipko Theke Joshua Road, Gach Bachate Badhun Jot in Bangla. Mm. So uh, there are a few groups, the activist groups in this area, which is actually trying to fight against this. But they have lost the battle. So uh, what is your take on such activities which are still going on? Right? Well, you know, there is a war against the trees and forests and nature right now. I can tell you that. Even the people who fund so much of the maldevelopment, it's not development, who think they're the brilliant people. I mean, take someone like Bill Gates, about whom I've written many books now. Bill Gates says every cow must be killed because they have four stocks. Oh. He's the one behind yeah. cows are the big enemy. He, when someone asked, aren't more trees the solution to climate change? After all, that's the most efficient photosynthesis mechanism. And he says, those are idiots. Now, someone who thinks a tree does nothing for us yeah. and thinks these very artificial carbon sequestering systems uh, which will generate more heat, mm, yeah. mine more minerals, Correct. and just because they want a market, and then he's the one who's pushing fake food, using more energy, using more land, destroying the farmers of the world, farming without farmers, food without farms. Uh, we are in this strange alienation from nature and we are in a very big uh, war against nature. And to everyone who feels, oh, they didn't listen to us, I would say, stick your ground. Absolutely. So finally, I would like to ask you, what is your suggestion for this generation, the generation Z or the upcoming generation yeah. Alpha? Because they are very habituated and they are very familiar with the social media reels and all. They always yeah. watch reels every yeah. day. So can we make them aware regarding this environmental issues? Because sustainable development is for the future. I would definitely feel that the skills they have should be put at the service of their communication, but also their learning. I'm very happy if some of the young people wanting to have better lives for themselves, which, which they will not without a nature that provides those systems, those infrastructure of life, for them to intern with Navdanya. The movement has started. I do a lot of research. They're researching. But if they're campaign oriented, the brilliance of their social media should be put to shape the future we want in imagination and narrative, because that's where things will be decided. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Well, that was Dr. Vandana Shiva speaking on the environmental issues. For such content, keep listening and watching the Heritage Pod. This is Shubrajit signing off.